<laughs> hey up campers good afternoon to you it's a beautiful day here in the peak district and i am <laughs> i'm hiking <laughs> but i'm not camping i just like carrying my bag for the fun of it it's massive today <laughs> look at state my main objective for today is to have a little bit of fresh air <laughs> look at sight it's i've had to put straps back because it were proper trying to get me head so my main objective today is to go up to one of my favorite places that i usually run to a lot and uh, i'm gonna put my tent up because i like playing with my tent but also because I need to put it back together because last camp I took the inner out and the footprint and broke it all into pieces so I could dry it easier at home so I'm going to put it all back together again it's really just an excuse to get her out to be honest and enjoy using it because I've got plans to get a very a lightweight shelter in the coming months really just to get this pack size down but also a new backpack as well uh, that's in the pipeline i just need to keep saving those pennies i'm gonna get up to a nice secluded spot that i found a few weeks ago and i'm going to talk through all my kit all my winter kit i brought everything i've even brought a frying pan and i ain't even got a steak to cook in it Goes to summit, doesn't it? When you're bringing all your kit out, you're not even camping, but you just want to talk about it. So I'll let you into a secret. I've tried to do a kitless video a few times at home, but with that many interruptions from my dogs and my kids, my other half works from home, it's just not come off well. So I thought I'll just come out. It worked really well actually when I was down back there when I got Harry Helm out and Hilary Hilleberg to talk about how much I like them. So I thought, let's, do, let's just do this, see how it comes out. It's a Monday and uh, it's quiet. It's cold, but because I'm hiking and it's uphill, <laughs> soon get a sweat on. So first bit of kit, my new running top absolutely love it it's a nice color it's got reflective sleeves and it's by one of my favorite brands Provis. a lot of people have been asking about me uh, red backpack that i take hiking as well that's Provis. so i've even brought that with me to show you <laughs> so this is like a kit list solo sarah kit list this is everything that I own in this backpack, including my tripod. So if I were going out on a worst case scenario, wild camp, rain, cold, snow, wind, this is what I'd bring. And yeah, just proves how much you can get in a 50 litre bag. Doesn't it? Look at that. 50 litres. Flipping brilliant. So I'm out at Moors, Eastern Moors of Sheffield, Flask Edge Trig Point, my best favourite. I can run to it from home, albeit about 10 mile round trip like, but oh, I could drive to her in 10. And it's about a mile to the top from Ola Bar. Ola Bar is a roundabout basically. You can go off to Hathersage, or you can go off to Chatsworth Estate, Bakewell, Monsell and the White Peak. So it's a bit of a turnstile really for our beautiful Peak District. It looks like they've had mower out up here. Look at this. Been doing a lot of work over on Eastern Moors lately. 
seen a helicopter out doing its thing and dropping white bags of earth and vegetation they're just managing them all probably replanting some indigenous plants so like heather sphagnum mosses to preserve the landscape oh my god i got to jog i got to jog on up here with this lot so i've weighed my pack with all my food and water in a few weeks back 14 and a half kilos whoa it's a lot when you're hiking a long way so my main aim for going into the warmer season is to basically <laughs> be able to run with all my stuff without getting out of breath <laughs> joking not really but look at that look at that view isn't it gorgeous <sighs> yeah so this is a popular spot it's the main trunk road really over to Sheffield and you can get to the Roman road from here so it's usually quite busy with people wanting to come up to Triggs so record a camp spot wanted to have a little looky about and bring you on a little journey into my backpack <laughs> so I'll bring you back when we get there but I think I'll, I'll just show you a sneaky peek of the trig point first because she's got a special place in my heart for all those lockdown walks where I weren't allowed to go into Peak District I know I've been ever so good behaving myself and adhering to rules unlike most of other people <laughs> in government <laughs> so she symbolizes a bit of a board a bit of a special part of my life and i've also sprinkled both my dog's ashes up here because i feel closer to them when i'm here i miss them the two staffordshire bull terriers roxy and taz <laughs> i suppose i should dedicate this to you guys They've not been on this earth for quite some time now. And I've got four other boys at home to think about, so life goes very fast. Very fast. Here we have her. She's lovely, isn't she? Such a gorgeous view, right over into Peak District. And then we're looking at Stanage Edge and then right over onto Wind Hill and Edale Kinder Scout. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this is why I love it here. It's also got a little bit of shelter down in that dip if you're feeling like you need a bit of shelter from the wind. I've had picnics up here with friends. I've been up with my family, my son and daughter, my husband, and it's just a nice special place. So there's also horses over there. Horses come for a walk. And then over in the distance is Sheffield. Beautiful city views, really nice. And then you can see the deers if you're lucky enough. So we're going to say goodbye to Flask Edge Trig Point, full of bird muck. And we're going to wander off in a different direction for my video today. I'll see you in a bit. This is me Osprey Aura AG50 backpack, completely full up to top. As you can see, it's got a nice shape and the back system is absolutely 
fantastic. The straps, the breathable mesh, the back in there. Can you see how it's got a really nice rigid frame? And what I really like about it is there's a silicon part here, uh, a silicon coated mesh where you it doesn't move around. It keeps nice and stable on your hips. So I'll show you that when it's empty because it's not very easy to lift up uh, with this. But it's got some straps on it like that where you can lift it up. Um, it is heavy, but when it's when it's on me, it feels so comfortable. So what I'm going to do is get my tent out and show you um, what it's like to pitch the tent without all of the bits intact. So footprint separate, inner separate, and then fly sheet separate. And today I've put my tent right at the bottom on purpose so I can lay out all my kit and show you what I've got. So I'll bring you back in a bit. I carry my Hillebeg Solo in this, this bag. And I usually have my footprint attached to it. And then I've got my tent poles in this bag. So I want to show you what I do, set it up as it is with just the fly sheet. Uh, so the fly sheet is really light curl on fabric. And when I don't have the inner on this, it's so tiny. It's hard to believe that Solo, Hilleberg Solo does weigh like two and a half kilos when you see it. And two and a half kilos actually, it's not that heavy, but everything adds up, doesn't it, when it's in your bag. So this is the inner tent. And then the outer is here. So that's the bag, discard that one. And then this is the outer fly. It is all a big tangled mess when you get it out of the bag. Because <laughs> the guy lines usually attached to something that they shouldn't attach to, like that's attached to there and that's attached to there. So yeah, you can see that is the making of the Hilleberg Solo, the main part. So you've got your white sleeve to white sleeve and then the other long pole goes blue to blue, blue to blue. And I think because I started doing it like this, I was comfortable, comfortable with it. When I tried it the red way, the red pole first, it felt weird. Oh, you've got to make sure that it doesn't fall out its sleeves. And then, and it's not so windy today, so I'm not going to peg it down, but otherwise I usually connect it to my bag or put a few pegs in. And then we've got the red pole, so the red sleeve is at the front of the tent and at the back. Oh, I love the smell of the grass around here. It's not usual to see so much grass upon these moors, so it's a treat. There's a big cow pack behind my tent though, so I'm going to try not to put it in that because she doesn't deserve it, does she? <laughs> I can't camp tonight, I'm working tomorrow. It's another reason why I do this kind of stuff. So then the clips one, two, three. I'd, I said I'd always count these, but I never have done eight, nine, ten, fourteen, fifteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Let's see where we're going to put her. So I'm just going to put that on like this. Really lightweight. You can see the wind blowing in that away. So really, we should have that pitched there. At this point, you do need to peg it in. Otherwise, it's a goner. It is very rocky, this ground. The sun's so warm. That cow pat's made its way into my tent. Hillary is set up very roughly here, 
just with her outer fly sheet and it's such a great space inside haven't got anything attached no footprint just the fly sheet and when carried on her own when carried on her own it can be really light and a great shelter to just jump into if you need it there we go that's what she looks like inside so i'm going to set up the inner fly and the footprint and let you have a look at that firstly i'm going to put the footprint in the footprint goes i believe shiny side up it's wherever the logo is yep shiny side up inside here and that's what it's like with the just the footprint in it i know a lot of people don't use footprints i like to use one just to give my tent a bit of added protection but as you can see with the solo the bucket style bottom which is really quite high up it's that thick it's that high up from the ground so you've got a lot of protection from from the water if it starts to come down so i'll just put this in now and what you can do is you can leave it like this so you've got loads of space inside your tent without uh, you know the door done up you've got loads of vegetable space to cook in i've never done it i've never needed to i've always felt like i've got enough space inside to cook right, so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you what i bring with me i'm going to lay it on the floor talk about each one why i bring it what i've thought about it in terms of its practicality um yeah just going to talk you through why I like it, um, where it's from, what brand it is, roughly how much it costs, that kind of thing. I'm going to have a cup of tea, have some lunch, and then I'm going to pack it all up and go home. <laughs> it's quite amazing how much you can fit in your bag when it's all stuffed in nicely and organised. I like to put my things in dry bags to keep them separate, not only to keep them dry, but just to keep them easy to find. So I'll start with what I bring my stuff in, my bag. So this is the Aura AG50. Sculpted to my waist. And these are all adjustable. You've got the back length can be changed if you've got a really small torso. You've got a really long one. And you can make it longer. Um, the straps are so easy to um, change and adjust when you're wearing it as well so you can sort of put it on and then make it really sculpt to your body so I love that um, a lot of people ask me about this little pouch that's on there and it's from my Proviz backpack so I'll uh, show you that in a sec but the little pouch is great because you can put your phone in there when you're not using it I've got my lip balm and then I have my um, car keys in there as well so they're close to my chest and then I usually carry my satellite communicator on my other strap with a really good size carabiner clip. So I'll just show you this a bit closer. So there's the Provis pouch. And then we have the satellite communicator attached with a good size carabiner on it. And then here is the part that I wanted to show you. So on the women's rucksack and probably on the man's as well um there's like a silicon coated section here that's on the lower lumbar of your spine um these can come out and be really long and they're adjustable and then you've got these pouches on the side as well which are always good i usually put my airpods in there they're not that easily accessible though when you're wearing it i find i can't stretch all the way around to grab them so that's why i like having things like this attached so really simple attachment you can just put it on um any bag that you're wearing really that's got these tiny little straps here and it's also got these walking pole attachments as well which i like 
The downside to this is how much it weighs when it's got nothing in it. It's, it weighs a ton. I think it's probably about one and a half kilos. Um, but to be honest, for how comfortable it is, I'd prefer for it to be uh, a little bit more well structured. Um, it's got a little back panel in it and it's got a zip on the bottom so you can access the bag from the bottom and then it's got this nice stretchy part that you can just stuff stuff in and it expands and expands and then the expandable side pouches are really good as well what i also love about it is that it's got accessible pouches from the side you can unclip unzip sorry you can unzip the sides and get anything you want that's in the main body of your bag so a big thumbs up for the osprey aura ag50 i've also got a little micro fiber towel that i find is really useful to use for just mopping up mistakes <laughs> spillages and just getting the um condensation off the inside of the tent so that is the bag that i use and then the one that a lot of people have been asking about is the Provis. it's a 20 litre it's a running trekking hiking backpack really well made reflective and water resistant i've also bought an additional rain cover because the other one blew off on the top of kinder scout leave no trace but it didn't have an adjustable strap this one that i got off amazon nice and green as well it's got a strap so you can attach it to your bag the other one didn't i really should have attached some kind of carabiner to that to make sure it wouldn't fly off but this is dead comfortable it's not not very well structured but it's lightweight and that's the main thing when you're doing your trekking and you're running it's got a nice foam back rest for extra ventilation and it's got a hydro pack you can put a water hydro pack in there and it all clips together on the side to make it cinch it in as small as possible it's got some expandable pouches on the side it's got a waist strap it's got little pockets um i like this this is adjustable as well for however high you want it on your chest it fits really well to me and i love it it comes in a lot of different colors um and that added little pouch was a real big seller for me got clips that you can put your hydro pack to attach the uh the tubing to drink from um yeah love it really nice and then it's got an, another little pouch, a little zip compartment on the bottom and I put my first aid kit in there. There's another bag that I've got, which is the on pouch. The on pouch is a chest pouch. That's awesome if you're just wearing a really light backpack and you can put loads of stuff in here. I think it's a five litre capacity and it attaches to your bag on your chest and you can still um, cinch it in there and attach it. So that's a nice addition uh, if you want to get stuff quickly you know snacks or hydrogels or your camera or anything else like that really love that um really good bit of kit love the arm stuff most important thing i think i've got to mention is these boots the rab boots i absolutely love them i'm just going to bring you a bit closer i'll show you all my stuff as it's laid out <laughs> so got that stuff all that is clothing things that keep me comfortable in my tent on a hike this stuff is my kitchen my sort of cooking equipment and here is my sleeping stuff my ablutions my sleeping bag there so i'm going to talk about all those individually it's a lovely day that wind hopefully it's not causing too much of a problem I'll show you. This is my microphone. It's the Boyer mic and I will be able to show you a picture of my of the other attachment but I can't take it out of my phone when I'm doing a video. So it's a tiny little basically like this part, this black bit that just fits into the lightning cable where your lightning cable would go to charge your iPhone. So it just goes in the bottom. It's very lightweight and I think it's got about eight hours battery life on it don't get it wet it breaks <laughs> and that's the only problem really with it 
Um, I have got a few of these, but I think the sound quality is fantastic that I get from such a cheap microphone. So this is my boots. These are the Rab boots, Pertex Quantum. Um, they are so comfortable, so warm. They can cinch as well around your legs. I've had those in my sleeping bag um, down to sort of minus five. I wear them at home as slippers. I absolutely love them. So they get my boat. And then my gloves, I've got these Rab gloves. I've mentioned them a few times in my videos. They're just lightweight gloves that have got a fleece lining inside really nice and warm. The Rab mittens, they were a new addition for Christmas and they are brilliant. They've got inside, they're like those gloves that I've just shown you, but they've got an added waterproof mitt. Um, really nice for when you're hiking. I use those on my 18 and a half mile round kinder walk and they were just life, life um, saving really when I got cold wet hands. Um, you can't use stuff like your phone and things and do intricate stuff, but they're more in the tent at night if you're really cold or if you're hiking and you've got walking poles or you're hiking and you've got free hands. Keep you nice and warm and dry. Nature hike. Down pants. So these are in size XL. I'm a size 14, 12, 14 woman and I find that they are ample for me. They've got an adjustable waist. I'd say that they're probably about a 34 bloke's waist as well, but these have been absolutely brilliant. Um, they loft out quite nice. Fabric's a little bit on the shiny side, but these, they've, they've made my sleep system go up a notch without having to spend a lot of money on a new sleeping bag. So my sleeping bag goes down to minus three, but these have just helped me manage in temperatures that are probably lower than minus five to be honest the ends of them as well that's what they're like at the the ankle cuff so they are awesome they get my votes i didn't need them on my last camp didn't even get them out of the bag i was more than warm enough with my decathlon run warm leggings so excellent really nice comfortable breathable waterproof trouser and the zips go right up to the pockets on your waist there's a two-way pocket two-way zip that goes right down to the end easy to get off over your boots they're still a little bit dirty actually from some hikes that i've been on and they do not let a drop of water through and i do not get sweaty as well so absolutely fantastic i love them absolutely love them i don't know what make they are ah, they're a size 14 uk size 14 us size large and they are just awesome so i never i never let the weather put me off now because i've got all this stuff to keep me warm and dry and I've got a tent that you could go to at tops of mountains in and still not die. So that was my aim really, to make sure that I've got everything that I needed to be able to go out whenever I, I can. So that's me waterproof trousers, waterproof jacket. You've seen me wearing my red jacket. I'm not going to take it out. I just wanted to show you this ultra sill nylon. What is it? An ultra sill nylon um, dry bag by Sea to Summit. It's a nano four litre and it's very thin. Really good to keep my down jacket in. It squashes down to really small um, and it's nice to just know where my stuff is because it's bright blue and I can just grab it real quick. You've seen me mess now at. I love this hat. It is so warm. It's not the smallest, but often, more often than not, I've got, I've got it on my head. <laughs> And it's been a really nice, comfortable, warm addition to my camp. So thanks, Paul and Joe, for making that. I have harped on about it a few times. I've also got this dry bag full of the things that I'd usually take. So I've talked to you about these Primark leggings. These Primark leggings are fur-lined. When you're sleeping at night, it's like wearing fur-lined long johns. So they're awesome. Primark, four quid. It's buying blokes. They have them in black and red and all sorts and even bright pink. Go for it. Don't have to be a woman to wear them. And then I've got this technical fleece 
by Rab. And this is nice because it's it's just so warm and cosy and it's nice to hike in as well. You don't get overly hot. My prove is base layer is really good. It doubles, obviously it's for running, but when I'm sleeping at night in my tent, I get very warm in this. It's lovely. Um, it's got a reflective pattern on it as well. It's like a fleecy type of soft microfiber inside and it's got little thumb holes in the sleeves as well talked about this a few times this is a car windshield protector doubles up as an amazing carpet insulating you from the cold ground but i've also got the footprint as well which does a good job and then also the the lining of my inner which is also very thick and robust fabric so i've stayed really warm but this it just makes your floor nice and warm to touch it doesn't feel cold so get yourself one of them, £1.49 from Home Bargains. <laughs> the next thing is me, Big Agnes, Rapid, SL, in short. That's an insulated mat. It's very thick. When I've got it pumped up, it's about this thick from the ground. It's like an actual proper mattress that you sleep on at home. Comes in a nice bag like this as well with a punch repair kit. And... The baffles on it are really comfortable, like your standard mattress. Um, and I've just got it in the little tiny short length, 20 by 66, and that's ample for me. I'm five foot six. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, and I've got loads of room in the solo with it. It hardly takes up any room in there. Um, so yeah, perfect, love it. Um, I'm daring to sit on it now, which is great. I don't not want to sit on it. It feels strong. So I've trusted it more now. I sat on it on my last camp. But very comfortable, very warm. Strongly recommend. Love it. A Trekology Aluft pillow. And that is, look at the pack size of that. It's like a can of Coke. Um, it's an inflatable pillow. And I really like it. It's got a nice sort of cotton cover to it. It smells like lavender. Bungee to attach it to your sleep mat. The Alp Kit Hunker um, bivy bag. And it sort of has its own little compression sack there. The cinch. You can just pack it up in a tiny parcel. I think it weighs about 450-500 grams. So it's definitely something to add to the weight of your pack but during winter it's better to be warm and dry than it is to worry about how how heavy your pack weight is in my opinion anyway um, and those really cold camps i have got in this in my sleeping bag with my down pants on and it's made i, I must sleep warm and um, i get cold really cold at night um, my lower half of my body gets really cold so i do uh, make sure that i'm nice and snuggled in that the snow camps it's been particularly useful as well so definitely worth having not actually needed especially if you've got a sleeping bag that goes down to like minus 10 or something and you actually want to camp in winter because not everybody does do they sierra designs i think if i've got enough time and battery on my phone i'll show you me getting in and out of this i might as well <laughs> um because it's a zipperless sleeping bag and it's halfway between a sleeping bag and a quilt. It's really easy to get in and out of for all those toilet trips that I have at night. It's extremely warm. It's very lightweight. It's relatively small. The pack size is really little. Let me look at it compared to me. Um, I know some sleeping bags can be massive. Now it's got 800 fill down. So it's really well filled with down. So brilliant. It's about 850 grams, something like that. Right, so I take about three or four of them and they're often empty and I fill them up when I get to a water source that's moving. It might be brown, it might be peaty, but it still tastes good and I'm living proof that your water filter actually does work. <laughs> so your water filter I use as a catadin. Fill up your water, put that in, squeeze it out and then use your water that comes out there and I drink it straight from streams, it's lovely. I really like this, it gives me peace of mind and it means that I can go to places without water to carry, like lighter pack and as long as I know where my water sources are, I've always got clean water to drink. This is from Amazon 
and it pops out. I usually put stuff in there like coffee in a, a little tub to take or tea bags. Fill every little nook and cranny that you can with stuff that you might need. Use the space wisely. And I like this because I can put the lid on, I can close it if I want to, and it's safe. It's not going to spill all over because I am clumsy. And yeah, it, it keeps your drink warm for ages. So although I don't think it's insulated, it's a nice little buy that from Amazon. I'll put a kit list on. I am trying to compile one with some links for you. Something that I never thought I'd do, but people have been asking me, so I thought I might as well. So then my speed to stove, you know that I use a alcohol stove. And what I'll do is I'll set this up in a mo because I want to have a drink. I've got a coffee with me. Um, but this comes in a tiny little parcel like this. There's everything I need in there. And it's very lightweight. It's about 250 grams um, without the lighter. I put my lighter and my spoon in there. And it's a 500 ml pot. So speed to stove will come out for an appearance shortly. Brought me frying pan, lidded frying pan. It's by Boundless Voyage or Voyage. It comes in a little bag to keep it all together. And it's got a lid on it and what I like about it is when you're cooking anything that's spitting stuff at you you've got your lid it contains the heat and it doesn't get fat or any juices from any meats or any any pasta or anything that you're cooking in there all over your tent this is a pot stand for the fire maple and I, I just place that on the top of my alcohol burner and then rest my pan on the top like that so it's not an ideal setup by any means and then I've got a plastic spatula so I don't scratch the you can see I overheated it when I used my fire maple so it has got a spot now that where the non-sticks worn off it so it's a bit rubbish but all in all this pan's been really good I've enjoyed using it this is a chopping board it's something that I put underneath just to protect the ground but the speedster stove does come with a little plate that you can put on that folds up as well and that protects the ground. It's really important when you're going out, you don't scorch the grass, you don't start fires. Um, I use it in my tent so I like it being on that and then on my footprint. It's already started to warp a little bit with the heat that it generates so that just goes to show that it's worth having something and with it being so light. Um, doubles up as a chopping and it's an actual chopping board from Aldi you can get them in big about a pack of five good buy that what I'll do is I might show you um, the speed to stove setting that up for a cuppa and I'm going to show you my sleeping bag as well how I get in it what it looks like uh, what I look like in it because you don't often see many campers showing themselves asleep in their sleeping bag so it's nice to see that kind of stuff the speedster stove comes in its pots inside you get a little bag and that's got your windshield in it i also put my soto lighter in on my spoon and then my speedster stove that's all it is a little tiny metal pot with a screw lid no bigger than a lip balm my um vaseline lip balm unfold it And it's got integrated pot stand wires inside it. The pin then feeds down into all of those little notches and then your pot stands are there look and that's all it is. So it also comes with this tiny little plate. Do it so it's towards you as well undo the lid and then I keep my alcohol in this Fargo bottle fill it up with enough this is a 50 ml non-spill spirit burner in there and light it got the Soto lighter with its extendable arm the water big cup of coffee I think today I'm going to drink it straight out of this cup and then it just goes in there like that 
and you just wait. So here's the the stove. It's on the boil and it's not taken long at all, probably about five minutes. I'm going to try not to burn my fingers. And there she is, some nice boiling water for a cup of tea. So I'm going to park you down, take you off my gimbal and I'm just chilling out, <laughs> chilling out. A man's just walked past me. He says, oh sorry I didn't see you there. I probably didn't expect to see a woman with a tripod in a tent doing a, a little film, did you, anyway? <laughs> so I'm going to make me a nice cup of coffee and I'll bring you back again on my tripod. I'll show you my tripod. Over the boiling water you go. That's my tripod. Very cheap. 15 quid off Amazon. Absolutely love it. It's brilliant. So there's my speedster stove protecting the ground flame looks quite ferocious gotta be careful with them not going to put me hot pot on the ground either and put it on the lid so we don't have any scorch marks <laughs> and there we have it it's out straight away I'm sat on sat on footpath actually watching the world go by working tomorrow can't stay out all night got responsibilities <laughs> nice to get out and look at all my favourite places there's no way that I would camp down there with the footpath running up here because when people are walking down, I mean, it's stunning, but they can see me right there. How could I forget to talk about this? Right, this is the Kitty Wizard. I've spoke about it many times on my videos, but I thought I will show you again today as part of my little kit video. So it does come compressed like that, tiny, with a little lid. You open it up. And then it's got some components inside it that make it a little bit more user friendly. So you've got a nice tight seal there. And then you pop the funnel inside the bottle. Like so. And then the bigger end goes to the back when you're a girl and you're into it like that. Find a very responsible place to put the contents and then fold it back up into its smaller version. You can get smaller versions for children and what I really like about this is it glows in the dark. Nothing more exciting than having something that glows in the dark, takes you back to your childhood, doesn't it? Having stickers on your wall and Things that you could see in your bedroom when you were falling off to sleep at night. Well, nothing like a little kid, kiddie wizard piss pot to uh, bring back a bit of nostalgia. <laughs> and there she is. Nice and small. Relatively light. Definitely worth carrying. Right. I usually give it a right good shake when I first get it out of the bag. To loft up the down. Fill it full of air. Get it in. The sleeping bag. There's no zip. And what it's got is this really cool feature that if you're really hot, you can put your feet out of the bottom like this and walk about if you really want to. I mean, I'll give you a demonstration of that as well. Put your feet back in there. It's got a self-sealing flap and then lay down in it. head in. Don't always put my head in it. Ah oh, yeah, that's it. Nice and cosy. So as a side sleeper, I sleep this way. Put myself in it. And obviously I've got my pillow as well so my head's about 
cover head in if I want to. And it does cinch right up. So it's dead cosy. Oh, nice. I hunch up like that, take my legs out, on the truck come, done. And there we have it, the Sierra Designs Cloud 20. <laughs> One of the best bits of kit I've ever bought. So warm and snuggly, I absolutely love it. I really want to show you what it looks like when you walk around with it. So you can even walk around in it if you want to. Get your head in. Perfect. Look at that. So if it's a particularly cold night, you've got all your down gear on, you're sat outside your tent, like a little gnome. times like this where I need to stop messing about, get all my kit packed away and get off. Put my shoes on. <laughs> she nearly flew away. <laughs> so yeah, there she is. The good old Sierra Sky. From me foil Max trying to escape. <laughs> Gear review thumbnail. <laughs> What does it look like inside? This is what it's like. Fabric. Can you see? And then inside, you can see all the down because the fabric that's used is so thin. Colour. Have to see it. Look at the thickness of it now. How it's lifted up, and that's only been out of the bag. So that's me all packed up and off back to the car. I hope you've enjoyed looking at everything that I bring, say like on a winter camp. I've just sort of gradually getting windy up here now. I've gradually just added to my kit to make sure that I'm comfortable and safe when I'm out. So. I'm hoping to do the reverse as I go back through spring and summer now and just get less kit, less weight, smaller bag, smaller tent and I think it'll be an enjoyable sort of process to go through. One of my favourite spots is this. Can. as we come to the end of winter sort of celebrating our in a way i am celebrating the successes that i've had so far in my camps and what i've learned about myself the people that i've met my virtual friends my subscribers viewers in my last video i had so many comments it was so nice and so reassuring so comforting to know and uh, Listening to what everyone has got to say about it, thank you. It really does, uh, it means a lot. It kind of motivates me to want to make more videos. So yeah, thanks for your comments. And I, like I say, I do, I do endeavor to reply to all comments within reason, as long as they're clean and they aren't in any way um, just horrible, because <laughs> some of them are. I just have to delete them, so. Thanks for the serious ones. Right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you on the next one.